name is Jay and welcome to the channel. Today we're back playing some Jurassic World Evolution where we're going to be starting a new series. This series is titled Nublar Emergent Biopark and what the goal of this particular project is is to create a biologically accurate Jurassic Park or Jurassic World. Something that I personally have always wanted and haven't really got the opportunity to create. But right now, um, of course we can't really create uh, a purely biologically accurate uh, park using the base game, but now that the modding scene for Jurassic World Evolution has kind of taken off, we can use that to really create something that we, we really couldn't before. And just a quick disclaimer before we really get into it, modding isn't officially supported by the developers of the game Frontier uh, for a plethora of reasons, primarily uh, licensing I believe because of course, Jurassic Park, the franchise is owned by Universal, and I can imagine they're weird about it, but uh, Frontier themselves, they have seen mods and they do think they're pretty cool, they just can't officially support them. So yeah, that's their stance on it. And of course, if you would like to mod your game, do so at your own discretion because they can be a little bit tricky and just essentially just make sure to always back up your files and follow the instructions that the mod author has provided so as to not uh, accidentally mess up your game too much. With that out of the way, let's talk about the park and what we're going to be doing. So as you can see on screen, you've already seen our first mod actually that we're going to be using, and that is the Tasmania Terrain mod. So if you've played the game, you can tell already that this is not the terrain that's usually present within the game. This is an entirely different um, ground texture and a different set of foliage. So this is actually from the Tasmania terrain mod which was created by Jack Mills and uh, the links will all be in the description to these various mods. And this isn't so much for accuracy, more so that I just kind of wanted a bit of a change of scenery from the usual terrain in the game. The terrain in the game is actually quite gorgeous and I, I really like it, but I just wanted something a little bit different for this park build to keep things fresh, you know. So I've decided to use that. And in this first episode, we're not going to be doing too much work. We're going to set up our operation center for the park, which has all our staff facilities, kind of like a worker village, something like you would have seen in the Lost World Jurassic Park. And uh, this is always important to do when you're starting off a new park, uh, just to set up your operation center. I've put it in this little uh, corner of the map where there's lots of foliage and it can kind of be hidden away. And as you can see, I'm starting to work on some interesting path designs. And uh, <laughs> very quickly I realized this path design, I, while I was making it, I wasn't really thinking too much about it. I thought, oh, okay, this looks cool. Let's add in some circles and stuff. And then I realized, hmm, I think that design may be a little uh, phallic. <laughs> Sorry for that. But uh, yes, yeah, so I do, I do end up changing it just because it does look a little bit... Uh, Inappropriate, I think, <laughs> without me realizing it. Trust me, that was not on purpose. <laughs> I am I am slightly more mature than that, on, only very slightly. <laughs> Anyways, I did really enjoy uh, doing path design here. Um, and it was quite fun just messing around with the, the different types of paths that we do have and just making it look a little bit more interesting. And later on in this video, I will be going on a bit of a live tour of what we've done so far in the park and I'll explain a little bit more about my design choices and things like that so that you'll un probably get a bit of a better idea why I used the pass in the way that I did. And uh, yeah, let's talk a little bit about the dinosaurs that we're adding today. We're going to add in our first uh, habitat today and it's kind of going to be really close to the entrance and it's going to be kind of the first animals you see when you enter the park. And today I decided to go for the Ankylosaurus and the Pachycephalosaurus. Those two dinosaurs I thought make really good entrance animals. They're not super big ticket animals, but they're still impressive enough to really give you a sense of awe when you enter the park and you see them for the first time. And we have used mods for both of these animals to get them as close to biologically accurate as possible. The Ankylosaurus uh, was created by the user Digital Duck on the Nexus, and the Pachycephalosaurus was created by Jagged Fang Designs, the modding group as well, who have been around since the days of like Zoo Tycoon 2. So, yeah, the links will be in the description for both of them. 
And uh, I just have to say, the models and the textures are beautiful. The um, the Ankylosaurus looks absolutely amazing. Looks so much more uh, biologically plausible. It looks a lot closer to what we think Ankylosaurus would have looked like in real life. And the thing with Jurassic World Evolution is that um, while all the movie dinosaurs, like the dinosaurs that have been seen in the film canon, are based on the film designs and are not necessarily super accurate, the dinosaurs that aren't based on that are pretty accurate. And I'll talk a little bit about uh, more about this in the live play, so um, just keep your ears open for that. And uh, yeah, otherwise, there's not too much else that we've done today. Uh, of course, we need to set up our holding pen. What I usually do for these parks is that I create a holding pen with a hatchery so that when when the time comes to create our dinosaurs, to hatch them out, um, we actually have a space to release them into and then from there we can transport them into the uh, main enclosures just because the hatcheries themselves are pretty large buildings and I don't want to have one each for every enclosure if that makes sense. And uh, on the screen right now you can see that I have realized that that piece of path looks a little bit too, um, a little bit odd, <laughs> so I've decided to change it. And I do like how the path design turned out for this area. And of course I've covered the um, surrounding area with some foliage just to hide away the operation center a little bit more. Because I think that this area does do a little bit better being a bit more hidden. So I think that was probably for the best. And uh, yeah, let's talk about the style of this park going forward. So as far as foliage goes, I'm going to try and keep it somewhat temperate. So I will, will be using a lot of the redwoods. And um, I'm trying to go. I'm going to try and avoid palm trees and stuff like that. I'm going to try and keep the plants a little bit more temperate, I think, because that looks quite cool. And as for the rest of the enclosures in the park, I would like to try and make them so that you can view them from the outside, but at the same time, there will be an option to take a tour vehicle and drive through each of the uh, enclosures one by one. And I think that would be pretty interesting as well. Uh, as far as the game is concerned, I do have all the different DLCs and as part of the second most recent DLC, the Claire Sanctuary DLC, you do get this big tour vehicle uh, that looks a bit like a truck. And I think that vehicle is kind of my favorite for going on tours. It looks really good. So we're going to be using that later on as well. And of course, I have already picked out my dinosaurs for the park. I've picked out, I think, 20, which I have got the mod for and are going to be biologically accurate. And besides those 20 or so which I've modded, I am going to be using a lot of dinosaurs that are already in the game that are already quite accurate. So things like some of the Stegosaurus, uh, things like Huayangosaurus and uh, Chunkingosaurus, and the Ceratopsids like Pentaceratops, those guys are all pretty accurate already. Like even if you do mod them, the changes will be relatively minimal and you wouldn't notice them too much. So I will be using those guys as well. Uh, some things you're not going to see, uh, you're not going to see any, probably not very many small carnivores. You have one or two which I've uh, chosen. But things like the Velociraptors, that's just, the in-game Velociraptors are of course not uh, accurate at all. They're based on the film designs, which are cool, but they're just not biologically plausible. And there just haven't been any mods which uh, improve them to the standard that I would have liked. So, um, not saying the mods are bad, just saying that they're... This particular, like, fed, really heavily feathered dinosaurs are very difficult to mod because um, feathers themselves don't lend themselves to, like, direct modeling. You, you would need to use, like, 2D surfaces and a whole bunch of things which I'm not super familiar with, but I'm just, you know, just putting it forward that feathers are really difficult to model. So we're not going to be seeing any really heavily feathered dinosaurs. The ones that are feathered, you'd see them with quite a light coating of feathers. So uh, things that you can do directly on the skin. So I think that's pretty good. Anyways, here's some quick cinematics of the, the operation center. And I'll get back to you guys in a couple seconds.
Alright, so those were just a few cinematic looks at our operation center. And now we're just going to quickly go through the speed build of me setting up the holding pen and the habitat for our first dinosaurs. Just quickly talking about what that habitat is going to be like. It is going to be set really close to the entrance, so it's going to be one of the first things you see. There is a viewing gallery so that you can go into the viewing gallery and have a good look at our dinosaurs. And as for the habitat itself, it's not particularly complicated. The edges are all really heavily forested, so you can't really see the fence. That's kind of the, the look I'm going for, where it's more of a, a... It's not really a theme park like Jurassic Park is. It's more of a zoo or a biological preserve, so to speak. So you come in and you get a very natural look at these dinosaurs and hopefully get an idea of what they may have looked like uh, in their natural environment back in the day. I say back in the day like it was the 60s or something, not, you know, like a hundred million years ago. Uh, not that much actually for these guys. These two were both uh, Cretaceous, late Cretaceous animals, so about 65 million years ago, right before the extinction event. Um, both of these animals are very cool. They're both very sturdy animals. If you would like to know a little bit more about them, uh, do look them up. And Kylosaurus uh, was contemporary of obviously the more famous Tyrannosaurus from the Hell Creek Formation. Uh, basically really really sturdy animals like imagine like a pangolin or an armadillo scaled up you know to a big size and they've got the big tail club which is super famous you know you can swing that around and cause some serious damage to any would-be attackers as for the pachycephalosaur uh, we are using pachycephaly uh, <laughs> pachycephalosaurus itself which is the kind of the named species and it is the biggest pachycephalosaur if I'm not mistaken uh, it's got that uh, classic domed head everyone knows about. Again, the function of that domed head isn't super clear. We're still, it's still debated to be honest. Uh, we still don't know if they were used in combat and even if they were, whether they were used like head on, you know, or whether they used them to like kind of uh, ram into each other's bodies or whether they kind of graze their heads or whether it was just a display feature. We, we really, um, like there are theories, lots of theories, and some are, some do have more backing than others, but overall, we're still not super sure about these animals. So yeah, that's about that for them. There's only a couple minutes left now, and then we're gonna have a quick shot of uh, the release of these animals. So when they come out of the hatchery, so you'll be able to see them a little bit more up close. And then we're gonna go into the short live play section where we're gonna look at so we're just going to have a tour of everything we've built so far. So I uh, do look forward to that. And uh, that is it for my commentary for now. And uh, with that, I uh, will leave you to it. And of course, uh, I will be back for the live play in just a couple of minutes. So yeah, thanks for listening. I'll see you in a second.
Alright everyone, so here we are in the park itself. Uh, apologies for the uh, slight lag, my game isn't the most stable at the moment just because it's still running on a, a laptop and not, you know, proper computer and it is uh, running at a pretty decent quality. It is on um, high at the moment, so we're gonna get a pretty good view of our dinosaurs. Anyways, let's just have a quick tour of what we've done so far. As you can see, here's our entrance plaza with our two, um, well, they are restrooms, but I'm going to pretend they're like ticketing booths or information centers or something, just because they're quite nice buildings. And as you can see, we do have a lot of people in our park already. Um, one thing I'm not a fan of is this automated entrance here, the one they put down automatically. Um, it's called the operation center. Not the biggest fan of that. Um, so I'll try to hide it with the trees a little bit. And um, yeah, let's just go here. I'll show you the dinosaurs towards the end of this. But um, yeah, as we go down, we have our high street, which I'll eventually use to um, put down our shops, our restaurants, things like that. And it leads up to the innovation center, which will be the centerpiece for our park. And if we turn left, we got this quite cool path, which I kind of made to sort of simulate the structure of DNA very, very vaguely. And uh, just wanted to mess around with path design a little bit. Um, so we've got a little bit of that going on here. If you want to see cool path design, I really recommend the YouTube channel Evolution Square. She does incredible path design. It is insane what she does with this game, so that's really cool. Do uh, give, her, um, give her a watch. She was a bit of an inspiration when it came to some of the path designs that I did here and that I will do in the future. Definitely, definitely check her out. Anyways, here's our operation center. So you can see we've got our ACU, our science and security centers. Got our fossil research center, the expedition center, and our ranger station, of course, with our little ranger cars. I painted them orange because I quite like the orange color, and uh, same goes for the helicopter in the ACU, it's also orange. I think it just looks quite modern and nice, so yeah, I've got a safety bunker here, emergency shelter, sorry. A couple of storm defense stations. I, I just overall like the look of it, it's very utilitarian while maintaining an element of like aesthetic design, so I quite like the look of it. And over here, of course, is our holding pen. So we have the hatchery here, the Hammond Creation Lab, where we can hatch dinosaurs into before moving them across to their respective habitats. And uh, yeah, I think I think it turned out pretty nice. I really like the look of it. I think it, it sits really well here in this little pocket off to the side while leaving us loads of space to continue building our park. And just quickly now, let's have a look at our dinosaurs. Let's hop into the viewing gallery. Um, and see what the view is like. There we go, there's our dinosaurs. Right here we have our Pachycephalosaurus. Love, love, love these uh, new accurate designs. Um, the feathering I really like. I believe feathering on Pachycephalosaurus isn't um, really known. We haven't got any fossils showing that, so we do think they're probably mostly scaly. But considering how you know prominent feathers are within the whole of Dinosauria. It is not out of the question at all for Pachycephalosaurus to have feathers, so I think it's a pretty decent liberty that they've taken. And overall the model is really gorgeous. Look at the colors, it's so beautiful. And just overall as a creature, it is miles, um, miles better than what we have in the game previously in terms of accuracy. I do like the original game design. I think it's really cool. I just think that this is obviously more accurate and I do prefer that. This isn't like me bashing the game itself. Of course, the game is a Jurassic World game and it's meant to follow the designs of those films. And uh, yeah, the Ankylosaurus. The Ankylosaurus look really good. I love it. Here's the thing with the game itself, Jurassic World Evolution. When they're not strictly following a film dinosaur design, they actually tend to go for pretty accurate designs with a couple exceptions. So, for example, the uh, Euoplocephalus, which is an ankylosaur just like this one, looks really accurate for what it is. And um, like that was because they didn't really follow a film design. Same goes for the Suchomimus, which looks really accurate already. And quite a lot of the Ceratopsids, the Stegosaurs are all very accurate because they don't really have a film design to base on. So they just go with what's in the real world, and I think that's a great way to do it. Anyways, back to what's on screen. They, this Ankylosaur mod is beautiful. That is quite likely what Ankylosaurs would have looked like in real life, um, in terms of the the scoots being 
somewhat embedded in the skin rather than being like big spikes that just kind of uh, completely coat the exterior of the body. And it's just, it's just so beautiful. The skin choice is excellent. The colors are lovely. This is only two of the skins. There are actually six variants altogether. So maybe in the future when we have the time, we will check those out as well. And yeah, these guys are just super cool. I'm really happy to give them this habitat. This is again like um, a bit of a starter habitat. You come in there, you see your first dinosaurs before moving on to like all the facilities and then you go on to all the other dinosaurs, like the bigger ticket animals. So again, it's nice to just have these. They're kind of like hippos that you might see at the start of a zoo. And uh, yeah, I just really like the look of them. Such beautiful animals. Oh man, dinosaurs are just the absolute coolest. <laughs> Anyways, now that is wrapping up our live tour of the park, I'm going to leave you guys with some cinematics. And uh, of course, please do leave a like and comment if you enjoyed this episode. There's going to be more of this series. I really like how it's going so far. And I think it's going to be pretty cool as we go along. Uh, please do subscribe if you want more of this content. And yeah, if you, you know what, if you got this far, tell me in the comments below what sort of dinosaurs do you want to see in this park? What are your favorite dinosaurs? Yeah, just let me know. And of course, I will see you all in the next one. Bye!